Welcome along to the live show. What we're looking ahead to, oh, we're not looking ahead too much to the game. We've got some injury news and some up, uh, updated information from the uh, embargoed press conference from Ten Hag yesterday. Uh, so make sure you get your comments in as well. We haven't got Kaz live on comments today, but we've got Josh. Josh, just say hello to the lovely people. Hello, everyone. You're supposed to say hello, lovely people. Oh, hello, lovely, lovely people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, main headline I wanted to talk about uh, this lunchtime is uh, Sheikh Jazim's lawyers and the old uh, 92 group, 92 Foundation, that was supposedly, uh, or didn't exist according to Sir Jim Radcliffe. So the lawyers are involved. They want to know why they are being, let's just say, dissed and disrespected and a few other words anyway about their bid because obviously Sir Jim has uh, made that sort of joke and jest regarding are they actually real? Uh, do the 92 Foundation actually exist? Does Sheikh Dazim actually exist? Uh, and anything that Sir Jim says now is obviously what United says because he is part owner of the football club so when Jim opens his mouth United are opening the mouth and United have been sent uh, well, the lawyers, according to The Athletic and Carl Anker anyway, have been into United asking why this has come out this way. Why is there so much slander, in a way, on the 92 Foundation? Now, you look into it even more, and what's even more interesting on this is that they are claiming the 92 Foundation, that is the Qatar bid, that they, they in fact did bid on June the 1st within the deadlines, and it did accumulate to a total of £7 billion. 7 billion that included clearing the debts that included a guaranteed investment after the bid was made for all of the shares which rounded up to around about 5.8 million somewhere around that i can't remember exact sums and numbers but it was around about 5 point odd billion then clearing the debt then an extra investment which altogether uh, came to 7 billion and that's the number that's going around it's like manchester united ignored that bid that's what's being said uh, and that from their side is uh, is why the lawyers are involved and they are not having the fact that Manchester United under Sir Jim Radcliffe are now saying that they don't even exist it's a bit of a joke bid did he uh, was he actually even a real person I think that's the words that were coming out of a lot of the reports uh, over the last couple of days anyway and the Athletic have covered it quite well and in detail and I just wanted to get your guys thoughts on this like did you ever or were you ever convinced that there was a Qatari bid in for Manchester United like it was just uh, just reading back through it it took me back so I'll, I'll just say like where I was when the bids were going in it was like it felt first of all for me I felt sort of I felt sad that the club was being sold on and like people were actually bidding for Manchester United in a way it was sort of like a weird moment and then you listen to the Qatari bid when it was broke down in writing and you were like Do you know what debt-free investment into the club guaranteed investment into united that was sort of like what was drawing me towards the qatari bid and that's what i wanted ultimately I'd, i'm not going to say that i was a as a gym in because i wasn't i wasn't he has convinced me as he has gone along that he is uh, good for manchester united and we are going in a different direction but ultimately if i think for every single manchester united fan i think the big law and the big plus point from what was a qatari bid and when i was hearing that this was genuine <laughs> that there was going to be no debt, that we was going to get an added guaranteed investment of over a billion into Manchester United, into infrastructure players, things like that. So the stadium wouldn't have been an issue, buying the players wouldn't have been an issue. And now that PSR and financial fair play looks like it's going to change, would have given Manchester United a huge, huge bonus and advantage over every other Premier League club, especially the top teams, because United's revenues with no debt, wow, that would have been that would have been just open season for Manchester United to the glory days again. But it isn't. We've got Sir Jim Radcliffe. We're moving forward with that bid. I just wanted to get your thoughts. I'm going to come to the comments in a minute with Josh, just on the Qatari side of things. Are you still a little bit, uh, I don't know if the right word is bitter, are you still a little bit disappointed that it wasn't the Qataris? Are you happy with Sir Jim? Have you, like me, been convinced by Sir Jim Radcliffe's words to David Brailsford's audit, things like this, the best in class and who's actually going to be at Manchester United or employed by Manchester United come the summer. Uh, is there any interesting ones in there, Josh, that we can pick out? Yeah, we've got Kenny Fan TV saying he always wanted Qatar, to be honest. Kenny, always wanted it. Uh, thanks, Kenny. Cheers, mate. Um, Stu's put Jim's a snake. Don't believe a word he says. It's funny how all of that, the Qatar news comes out and all of a sudden the 
So Jim Haight comes back through again though, isn't it? It's like an opportunity for people to say, I told you so. I'm not saying this is what you're saying, guys, but obviously. And by the way, make sure you give the video a like while you're at it. Uh, like I said, there's no guitar bid, but likes are free. Uh, any more in there, Josh? Uh, London saying, yep, yeah, Glazers chose the deal they wanted and the rest is BS. Mm-hmm, yep. Uh, I, I, I could see the Glazers actually wanting to ignore Qatari. Uh, they still wanted a piece of the pie. They seen it and thought, you know, and I said this all along, and I said the big thing with the Glazers is it's the power trip. We have got the most expensive sports enterprise in the world in Manchester United, and we know it is because they turned down a record bid. Uh, no one has bid higher for any sporting uh, franchise or enterprise or anything like that across world sports. No one has bid anything higher than what the, Qatar, the Qatari bid was for Manchester United, and they turned that down. So for them, it's like, we own the biggest, we've got a part of the biggest, and you know what? We're getting a few billion in our back pocket as well, just to still own it, just to let Sir Jim come in and make us even more money. So yeah, I could actually see the Glazers making a point of actually ignoring some side of the Qatari bid, like prolonging the Sir Jim side just to make sure that they got in first. Like it just seemed to drag on forever in a day. And so Jim has even said this himself. He's always said like there were lots of complications, there were lots of issues uh, with the bid, that a lot of hurdles that they had to overcome. But uh, in the end, we worked well with the Glazers. It just looks like, like the comment said there, I do agree with that. Like the Glazers, when they knew that Sir Jim was in, in for Manchester United, they could sort of structure a deal on their terms rather than having to accept or go through bids that were put together from like the Qatari side of things. Uh, like the hedge funds and the investment, I never thought that was going to be the case. I, I think the Glazers wanted Sir Jim Radcliffe and Ineos. I think that was their aim from the start. I don't think they wanted anyone else. That's my opinion, just looking at everything that's conspired and come out after the actual announcement. Uh, everything that Sir Jim has said and how quiet the Glazers have been for a very long time, like extra quiet, uh, and just let everything just play out from the club side of things, announcement-wise and things like that. It's just... It's it's not snide, it's business. It is, like, it's the, favorite, it's the famous saying, isn't it? Uh, all's fair in love and war and when in business, well, yeah, you don't get to the top without upsetting a few people or falling out. And I think they've probably fallen out with quite a few. And it now looks like with the lawyers coming in on Manchester United, that this is another one that has fallen out with the club and particularly the Glazers. Uh, any more comments there, Josh? Uh, we've got one from <laughs> Dobby saying, I'm not happy with the rat. I fear he's setting us up to fail. Always wary of him. He wants Southgate as manager. There's no smoke without fire. <laughs> don't, Dobby, don't. We're, we're banning that word. Like, I'm going to put into YouTube, ban the word Southgate from, <laughs> <laughs> from any live stream. No thanks. Any more there, buddy? Uh, one from Vassan. Unfortunately, now we're stuck with a minority shareholder who's relying on taxpayer handouts to build a stadium. I, are, wouldn't, go I wouldn't say he's relying on that. He's looking into it as you would look into any sort of source of funding. Wouldn't you have you had the opportunity? And if you know a few people in the industry or you know a few people that can help you out funding wise, then you're going to tap into it, aren't you? I don't think that's necessary. I think we will end up fronting the bill for this new stadium. How we do it, I don't know. We've not been in the Champions League and bringing in revenue sources uh, from the football side of things and the riches that that brings. I don't know how we're going to actually fund this. So, yeah, maybe it's going to take a little bit long to actually get the stadium going. I said three years, I know I did, but. I think when we actually decide on doing the stadium, I think from that point, three years, the funding in place, this is why I always said like the naming rights for the stadium are going to be huge. It's going to play a massive part to actually going towards paying for this uh, structure to go up. I think he's actually looking at it and going, look, uh, we want to hold major events at this new stadium. We want to hold concerts, boxing events. We want everyone to be paying in when NFL contracts coming into Manchester United. The Glazers are going to be full of that obviously uh, and I think money coming in that from that side I think that's ultimately where the debt of the stadium is going to get paid off I think that's where the, that's the only way I can see it because it's going to take them a few years to start competing and being consistently in the Champions League and you don't get real big big money to start funding operations like this until you're in the last stage of the Champions League and we are miles away from that any more there, Josh? Yeah, I've got one from Mr. Miracle. Was always in favour of Qatar because of the debt clearance and other promised investments, but I'm fine with Sir Jim at the moment. During the summer, we will <laughs> know what Ineos is all about. Yeah, I think that's a definite. I mean, everyone's waiting for the summer. We've said that many a times on the show. Uh, but, yeah, it is. Proof is in. Pudding is in. The eating.
let's see some walking as well as the talking and uh, hopefully we will see major investment in like we were talking only the other night like where did that apparent 86 million bid for Zhao Neves come from that apparently United are making this sum off like you just don't know where the money's coming from and uh, you've got to look at it and go well if they can fund it if they can afford it we're happy to take it but hopefully in all Man United's minds, and I know I'm the same in thinking this, hopefully there is a structure behind that deal that doesn't put the club in more crap. Like, there has to be part of this deal that works, the structure of it, the payments, the wages. We can't just be going out, not properly recruiting and scouting a player and then giving the world. Like, every penny counts now for Ineos, I think. And I think this is why they're bringing in the recruitment side of things, because it narrows down the gap of mistakes and errors when bringing certain players into the football club. So I look at that and I go, I think that's why the best in class is coming in. That's why we're looking at uh, bringing in people that are gonna ultimately recruit and bring in people that are worth the money and not wasting money. That's, that's the best thing about it, I think. And that's the only way that they can survive. Uh, any more questions in there, Josh? Yeah, mate? we've got a super chat from Alien saying, Sir Jim wanted a piece of the Super League pie. <laughs> well, hopefully that pie has now been put in the fridge and we're not going to see that again. Uh, Kaz has put, Adam, where's your security guard, mate? He's literally just to the left of us now. You just cursed us, Kaz. Like, he's looking over now. So if we do end up moving, uh, then it's because Kaz has cursed us. He's there, he's looking. He's been nice at the moment. Uh, I don't know how long we're in or how long we've been going for, but we've managed to last... Uh, how long have we lasted, Josh, without being stung? Uh, just 11 minutes now. Ah, we didn't do too bad, did we? We didn't do too bad before we were kicked out, but he's actually seen us and not come over to us, so, yeah, uh, hopefully we get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else in there, Josh? Uh, Mike Fergus is saying a 2-1 to Chelsea tonight, I fear. 2-1 to Chelsea tonight? Uh, honestly, I'm just having a scope around, trying to act like I'm just a normal person, so if you see me turning away, it's because I'm trying to act all nonchalant and uh, not like I'm recording on Old Trafford TF. But uh, yeah, we're going to be doing the warm up show later on back from the studio as well as the watch along later on, guys. So make sure you're tuned in for that. Uh, <clears throat> 2 1 to Chelsea. Uh, we'll get the vibe of the game later on and we'll probably figure out where we go from there. But yeah, we're also hearing news and what came out. From the embargoed, let's just say, part of the press conference yesterday was that Evans and Varane are both fit, so we'll talk about our team selection later, how we're feeling about them two coming in, who we prefer playing next to. Uh, well, is it going to be Evans and Varane? And Maguire's training as well, so we've got a choice of three. We've got a choice of three people, uh, and it's going to be, I think, Varane and Evans, personally. I think they're the best two. I think I've been the best two this year. Like, I've given up on Martinez now, everyone knows that. But uh, there was more, new more news coming out regarding Mason Mount as well. Uh, uh, and from that press conference, Tenag in the embargo version was questioned on Mount and his move again. Now, that's come up before, as we know, with like why Mason Mount signed for Manchester United. Was it for football reasons? Well, of course it was for football reasons. It's a stupid, stupid question, a stupid point to even be brought up. But, yeah, I think he went into a bit of detail saying, look, Chelsea offered him a new contract, but he was the one that decided to leave Manchester United. He was the one that decided to leave for Manchester United. He was the one that wanted to move. He wanted to move from Chelsea and go to United. And that's why he's here. He wants to play football for us. And I hope tonight he does get his opportunity because we'll talk about that more in the warm-up show later on and everything like that. But... I do believe that Mason Mount can play a significant part from now until the end of the season. And I think that is one of the only things that could probably save Ten Hag going forward. I think for him, I just feel like if one of his signings actually that's been criticised does really well, then I think that might help him out a little bit. Like, Adana has come through now and playing well. We've got Hoyland who has been the breath of fresh air. And you've also got... Mason Mount making an impact at the end of this season. All of a sudden, Ten Hag's transfer window from the summer doesn't look that bad. The only problem he's got is, and he's his own worst enemy in this, is he won't drop leading Bruno and play Mount where he plays his best football. So we're never going to know. There is an opportunity for Eric there to just mix it up, 
and say, there you go. Go for it, Mason. Go and prove that you are the player that everyone knows you are. That's why you were in the England squad. That's why you were the first pick for that, uh, for that team. Prove that you were worth the money and Manchester United weren't stupid going in with that crazy bid when we knew we could have got you cheaper when you had one year left on your deal. So, <laughs> help me save my job, basically, is what he's saying, Eric Ten Hag, in all of this. I just think with, with the likes of Mount, Anana, Hoyland, with the Anthony situation and the spotlight well and truly on, well and truly on, transfers and what Tenag has done at his football club right now. A little bit of help from a so-called, or in the fans' eyes, dodgy signing because this was asked as well and apparently the club have defended Mount a little bit and was the reason why the social media went a bit crazy in on Mason Mount in a positive way. A lot of people have sort of gone in on what happened at weekend against Brentford when the club tweeted out about Mason Mount and a great moment for him rather than the reality of Manchester United struggling. Uh, them comments have now been put into perspective by the club and they've said, look, Mason Mount was put aback by people actually saying, that does he actually exist? Is he part of this club? And are we ever going to see him? Well, it's a good opportunity now, I think, for him. Hopefully he stays bleeding fit. Because if he gets another injury now, I think that's every United fan giving up. Like, one more injury for one key player now, and I think we're all done. Like, the news of Martinez the other day, I think that sent a lot of people over the top. And... I think it'll be the same if we get one more. I think, do you know what? Like, Villa got beat last night. Tottenham dropped points the night before. And again, this happened at weekend as well. And last time, sorry, this happened when we were playing Liverpool in the FA Cup. Spurs and Villa both dropped points. We didn't take advantage against Brentford. If we don't take advantage against Chelsea, then I think even Europa League's going to be a push. Because Liverpool at weekends, I really am not confident for that one. But. Yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit later, Ron. But any more comments in there to bring up, Josh? Uh, yeah, we got one from Dobby saying, "Would you be Ineos out if uh, they hired waistcoat man?" Ineos out? Yeah. I'm not going to be Ineos out. I'm going to be like, like seriously questioning why we're never going to be able to get Ineos out or the Glazers out. We know this now. I know what you're saying, and I, I would be massively disappointed. And I will go in on them. I will go in on them big time. Uh, I just hope that they're actually thinking about. I think thinking about actually what they're doing. Like, I'm hoping that they've learned from their experience at Nice. I mean, yeah, you can't compare Nice to Manchester United. It's a totally different ball game. But honestly, you look at it and you go, you've had what five years maybe now at Nice. I think it is. Learning well, how football works, big decisions work, managerial structure and recruitment staff and all that works, how it's working all right now. Yeah, Nice have gone through a bit of a bad patch of form, but their structure and how it works there with the manager just being a cog in the machine and not having a final say, seem to have gone well so far, apart from the obvious, like I just said, form-wise. But Southgate, someone must tell them that Southgate's the wrong man. Like, you cannot, you cannot go in and get Southgate as a manager. You really can't. It's... It's just going to absolutely, it's, it's going to kill the fan base and I don't think he's good enough in the first place. So <laughs> just don't do it is the obvious. Uh, please give the video a like guys, make sure you're subscribing as well. Uh, don't forget, warm up today, five o'clock uh, live show, getting all your thoughts ahead of the game. Uh, then we're going to be on T4 for the watch along for all the members. Uh, me and Jay will be back later tonight for the breakdown and the full reaction to the game and what's conspired and what has gone down. Hopefully we're talking the United win. Jay went 2-1 the other night. I just don't know. I think mean, I'm score draw still. Nothing's changed. I, the only thing that will give me hope is when I hear the team line up. I'm not going to talk about that just yet because obviously we've got later on. We're just covering the news as such and what it is now. But yeah, just to recap on everyone, if we are, if you are just tuning in, uh, the news breaking, uh, well, not so much breaking today, but is that the lawyers from the 92 Foundation, the Qatari bid, are in on Manchester United asking questions and asking them to stop this so-called disrespect to their bid because there apparently was a big £7 billion bid in. When everything was put together, that was the whole investment from the Qatari bid. And to be passed off and ignored and laughed at by the likes of Sir Jim Radcliffe and Ineos to a point where they were saying, do they even exist? 
are they real people? They're not happy about it and they want answers as to knowing why they have been disrespected. It's the best word I can use to describe uh, what's happened in this situation. Uh, any more comments coming in? We've had a gifted, uh, gifted membership from the Honest Tiger, which has gone to Dobby as free. Dobby, he's back in the membership crew. We can come and watch us on T4 later, Dobby. And Honest Tiger, legend. Guys, if you are on that later as well, Honest Tiger, that's just reminded me, we have the rollover prize giveaway for you members. Who's going to score that first goal for United and what minutes? The person who gets the scorer and the closest minute wins the prize. Two prizes to give away. So, uh, anything else in there, Josh, yeah. regarding the subjects? We've got one from Andrew Short saying, it's a disgrace that United don't allow fan channels to film on their United forecourt. <laughs> and mate, honestly, like United are the worst in the world for it. They really are. Uh, planning on getting a little bit more access uh, for you guys coming soon. I'll keep you posted on that as and when. Uh, lots of other hopeful announcements to come as well, guys. But yeah, any questions for me in particular or anything like that, get your comments in now, guys. We've got Josh here talking through all of your comments section. Uh, have we got a super chat there, Josh? Yeah, we do from Alien. Um, Could all be Alien. the waistcoat boys when Southgate comes in. <laughs> do you know what? I guarantee, yeah, that mega store behind me <clears throat> will be selling Man United waistcoats if Southgate becomes the manager. And you know, there'll be plenty of people who just buy them simply because of the novelty and wanting to make a joke out of it. And it'll be, uh, what's the name? <laughs> it'll be a money spinner for him, it will. They're clever. I guarantee they do it, I bet they do. He's not coming though. Like I said, uh, we're telling YouTube to ban the word Southgate from the channel. <laughs> we're not allowing it. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, <coughs> any more in there, mate? We've got a super sticker from London. London, thank you very much, mate. Love that. Keep on coming in, don't forget to tune in from five o'clock today as well, guys. Uh, we have plenty of content coming in, so get back with the warm up at five today. So make sure you're well and truly tuned in for that. Uh, and we will be doing a full build up to the game, getting some early team news and rumours going around as United head over to Stamford Bridge. Any more in there, mate? Yeah, we've got Jack asking, do you think Rashford will be dropped? Uh, I hope he is, but I don't think he will, because uh, Ten Hag hasn't got the bottle to do it. Uh, I will think completely different of him if he does drop Marcus Rashford. I do, but hey, it is, it's, it's up to him. He can save himself or he can just go down with that ship. Uh, he's got a chance right now to repair the damage to the boat. But if Rashford plays, if he keeps going with the same team, same system, then they're not going to be able to repair that hole in the side of the ship and he will go down with it. He will sink with uh, that Man United ship right at the head of it because he is stubborn as hell, isn't he? He really is. He's beyond stubborn. Actually, yeah, he, I, I just hope he realises. I do. I hope he realises. And yeah, it's, it's a tough one because you never want to see any manager go down, but he is going to go down. He will. He will. And he'll be another manager on the list of failures at this football club since Felix Ferguson left. And the Glazers had real, real power on that. By that, I mean, like, he didn't have Sir Alex Ferguson and David Gill to bail him out. But, yeah, I think that pretty much sums everything up for today, guys. Obviously, the content is going to be quick, free-flowing, because we have got the game as well. I want to just bring you a little uh, video uh, midday as usual. Uh, I didn't do it yesterday because I was out filming with the Emirates uh, for the FA Cup. Uh, I will let you know when that content is out. That will be out around the FA Cup final time. Uh, it's amazing. Me and Alfie, uh, we're... We're filming all day around Manchester, so there's lots to come on that. And obviously, I'll send you the link, guys, when the video does go out on their socials and their platforms. So, yeah, stay tuned to that. But, guys, yeah, that pretty much does sum up all the news going on here on Match Day Early Doors. We'll get into more detail in the warm-up show later on, uh, going over everything, hopefully building up to what is going to be a decent night for United. But until then, guys, cheers for tuning in. Live from Old Trafford, I'm Adam. This is for United TV. I'll see you in the warm-up at 5 o'clock, everyone. Have a great rest of your day.